All right, last one. How are we doing? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my name is Lydia Wagenknecht. I'm a PhD candidate in ethnomusicology at the University of Colorado Boulder. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you about my dissertation research, which is um, the title of which is Conciencias Antarcticas, Sound, Climate Change, and Polar Identities in Punta Arenas. Here. Um, great, so I'll start off with a little bit of background just on Punta Arenas. Um, I will talk about my research questions, some methods, methodologies. Um, Oh, thanks. <laughs> my research plan, a few just like musical examples to kind of ground us in you know, what I'm actually working with. And we'll finish off with some questions. So this is a picture that I took in, in Punta Arenas. Um, if you don't know where that is, it's like way down south, like the kind of the big, big city, about 100,000 people, like at the tip of the continent, basically. Um, great. So just a little bit about me. I have my undergrad degree in music education, wide range, so I've taught like three-year-olds through adults, choir um, being my specialty. I've taught in Zambia, I've taught in Milwaukee, I've taught a little bit here in Chile. Um, and eventually I landed at the University of Colorado Boulder, which is where I am now. It's the top picture up there. Um, I. At Boulder, I work as part of a NEH-funded project in Pueblo, Colorado, where we are doing kind of this big oral history collection of musicians down in um, southeastern Colorado and in, in the San Luis Valley and in Pueblo. Really, really cool history of um, immigration there. And um, yeah, I can talk about that individually if you want. Um, I love I love ultra running. Um, if you don't know what that, we have some like runners here. So maybe people know what that is. But it's like running like long distances and eating a lot of food and like, yeah, staying out all night in the woods and such. Um, <laughs> um, and like, I love choral singing. I've got a husband who's here with me in Chile, Austin. We've got a little Chilean street puppy named Panqueque. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, she's gonna come back with us. So yeah, it's been, it's, it's been the dream. <laughs> so, um, just to kind of like connect some of the dots, like how sound might connect with climate change in Punta Arenas. Um, so being down really far south in the, um, near the Antarctic Peninsula, um, there are a lot of climate researchers coming to Punta Arenas in the kind of recent decades because um, it's very close to the peninsula where we're seeing a lot of, you know, climate markers. That it's close to the Patagonian ice fields, glaciers. Um, and so it's kind of become this hot spot for climate research. Um, we have the Instituto Antartico Chileno, the Chilean Antarctic Institute. Um, and Chile is part of the administrative region of Magallanes and and Chile and Antarctica, right? So like Punta Arenas is kind of billing itself as this Ciudad Antarctica. It's a jumping off point for tourism to Antarctica. Um, so, and it, it's sometimes being billed as like this last chance tourism, right? Of like trying to see these species before, ex they, you know, die off or, you know, that kind of thing, seeing glaciers before they melt and such. Um, Punta Arenas was also underneath the ozone hole, the Antarctic ozone hole in the 90s, early 2000s which led to this big increase in like kind of skin cancer. Um, now in Punta Arenas, you can still kind of see vestiges of that in like at the ski, by the ski resort, there's like a UV, um, like a UV uh, radiation danger like scale. And you can see kind of those things around town. Um, there's a lot of activism and collaboration between artists and research organizations. So like the Chilean Antarctic Institute, for example, does a lot of working with musicians and artists to kind of do community engaged work around climate in Antarctica. Um, so that's some of the musicians that I'm, I'm working with. Um, songwriting in particular is a, like a site where we can see this overlap happening um, because climate is really kind of central to this like Magallanico identity. Um, 
for example, there's this song called Oración a Magallanes, the prayer to Magallanes, and it's um, it's saying, you know, uh, it, it, it's talking about these industries, for example, that are we often link with climate change, like mining, petroleum, fishing. It's like God bless the the petroleum workers. God bless the uh, the ganaderos, the like. Uh, livestock farmers and like the, these kinds of trades and also talking about the climate in terms of like uh, this is the place with the, the snow and the wind and like that's what makes us who we are um, in Magallanes um, and so like what happens then with identity when the, there's less snow which a lot of people have talked to me about when I tell them about my project they always want to tell me like there's not as much snow as there used to be and you know so like how does how does that change over time when we look at songwriting um, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, a lot of people often ask, like, what kind of music I study. And I'm kind of a weird ethnomusicologist in that I'm not necessarily as focused on, like, a genre. I kind of have this cross-section of different genres. So um, one being soundscape, which is um, more kind of towards the, like, maybe if we're... Uh, you're not ethnomusicologist, so I won't make you like do the like sound and music debate or something. <laughs> but but um, soundscape is maybe towards like um, recording environments. So like going out in the humedales, like in the marshes, and recording the the sounds of the and experimenting with like microphones in the water, the hydrophones. Somebody's working with hydrophones. Yeah, um, Lily, I think, or not? Or not oh yeah, oh yeah, yes, <laughs> we're looking with hydrophones. Yeah. Um, that kind of thing, it, it recording like um, the the um, like wind farms, that kind of thing. Um, electroacoustic music, which I'll play later, so I won't explain that too much. But um, think like like just electronic music, and a lot of it kind of has this like '90s craftwork type sound. If you know craftwork, um, <laughs> classical music and kind of like experimental classical music. We got rock. We've got you know folklore. There's a big folklore songwriting competition in Punta Arenas. Um, this is a audiovisual installation that I went to called Una Pizca de Luz, which had um, different kind of like polar. Uh, soundscapes created by like human voices and then each one of those like soundscapes was attached to uh, some photography by Jimena Aguilar Vega um, and it was kind of from all over I think there was some from like Svalbard there was some from Antarctica and so it's kind of this this like polar exploring like polar soundscapes like what what does it mean and what does being polar sound like so with that said that's one of my research questions. Um, what does it mean to like be polar? What is like a polar identity? And what are some sonic trademarks? And obviously, like there's not one. There's you know many identities, polar identities, Magallanic identities. Um, so I'm just kind of like looking at like what that means to different people in kind of like a sonic way. Um, I, I'm wondering how climate change has impacted the material processes of music making. And this is a question that has kind of, as as I've been, there, I've been there for a while, and um, I kind of started with this as like an idea of like, well, you know, maybe there's people making instruments down there that like have to make it out of different materials now, um, and that's like not as true, but I, I do still think that um, I see I see kind of these development in material processes in terms of people wanting to like just kind of preserve. Um, preserve soundscapes and be kind of like a very attached to like conservation areas and things like that. Um, also, you'll see later somebody um, made an instrument out of kind of a local uh, berry shrub <laughs> that I'll talk about a little bit, um, which he's kind of like hoping to make like some climate statements by doing that. Um, I'm looking at what sonic and aesthetic qualities are especially attractive to climate artivists, so artivists being like artists, activists, um, and kind of seeing where there's crossover, like like how, how are they talking to each other sonically. Um, and then finally, how have more than human actors sonically negotiated climate change? So there's a lot of, um, like I'm trying to incorporate um, some there's some people working in like whale sound. And so I'm like experimenting with like thinking about whale sound or um, with like the wind farm sounds that people are like trying to record. And so like some of these things, um, 
like some of these things I'm still learning about how to like record and like understand and like process that as part of the in like a sonic ecology. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a really great great experience so far. Uh, I just threw like some methods and methodologies up here. Um, this isn't all of them. It's just kind of a overview, but um, community-based participatory action research, which it sounds like a lot of us are doing like some version of this where it's, you know, you're putting community needs first, working with existing community projects, um, and, you know, not just coming in and being like, well, this is my dissertation, so here's what you need to give me, you know. So I'm trying to like contribute to, to organizations that I'm working with and making sure that um, the research serves, serves the people I'm working with too. Um, I'm really focused on kind of like my listening positionality as kind of this like white settler US ear like that that affects how you hear things you know so um, I'm, I have to be really conscious of that when I'm when I'm listening to music and be sure to take into account other listening positionalities um, I'm working with some archives in local libraries some personal co collections and such I do a lot of interviews so that's like formal interviews, sitting down, recording them. I do some feedback interviews where I'll like play a video that someone made and at, like we kind of stop it and have them talk to me about like, what are you doing here? Why, why did you make this like choice? What are you trying to say with this uh, particular like, I don't know, instrument that you've included or, you know, something like that. Um, and then kind of like more conversational things where we'll like have an once and like have a discussion um, with, with multiple people and, about about some of these topics and then finally participant observations really important in terms of like just making music and like I'm trying to experiment with like soundscape recording I'm in a choir and I've learned a lot of like songs about Magallanes in my choir um, I'm learning the charango if you, I don't know if you know it's like a small uh, it used to be made out of armadillo uh, like an armadillo shell but they're like really small like uh, uh, string, it's like a stringed instrument and actually has a lot of the same strings as a, a ukulele so if you know how to play that you can probably get in Chirango pretty easily um, and just kind of like experimenting with my own compositions to kind of like learn experientially that way so right now I'm kind of in the first phase so I've been here for a year already actually because thank you, you, you US student program full right US student program um, that's been really great so that's just been like making community connections, doing interviews, making music, um, doing field recordings, uh, doing that archival work, going to just going to concerts. Um, I have some pictures up here. Here's my some of the ladies from my choir. Um, we've got um, kind of like a, I, I do a lot of like ethnography. Also, I didn't include that before, but I like. I don't love I don't love social media, but I'm like have, I'm on Instagram every day, like trying to find events, and like that's a really big part of of it. And like you can get really great information on people's um, work that way. Um, that's the big festival, the Patagonian Folklore Festival that I went to. This is like a smaller pena, like a in a restaurant, kind of a just like an intimate like dancing, singing, kind of like an open mic, but not. Not so open, and <laughs> sometimes more like politically minded. So yeah, um, and I have some research assistants that are wonderful, um, Luis and Javier at the University of Magallanes. So I would, was kind of like working with them over this year to like um, kind of figure out like how how I can best like help them be better music teachers by getting involved in this research because they're in the pedagogy program there. Um, so now I'm, um, I, I, I'm kind of transitioning now. I'm like in phase two, with a little bit of phase one. Um, I'm trying to like identify main themes for my first year. Um, I'm doing a lot of follow-up interviews. I'm starting to write so I can process some of these ideas. We're doing more kind of like starting to present a few more like findings and, and things for at the campus, um, drafting chapters, that kind of thing. And then in phase three, um, in October, I go back to the U.S. and that'll just be like fully <laughs> focused on dissertation and hopefully um, working with some teachers remotely from Magallanes to develop some curriculum based on, on my research too so that they can use it in their classrooms. Um, and also working remotely with just some of my community partners to like make sure they feel represented in the writing and that kind of thing. 
Um, so this is one example. This is a group that um, I was really excited to work with when I came down. Um, they're called Uvia Acida, Acid Rain. Um, and they're kind of like, they're like the godfathers of electronic music in this region. So like they, they are mentors to like so many people that are making electronic and experimental music. Um, and I think this quote from them is like a really kind of wraps up my research really nicely. Um, we're, we're sons of the wind, you know, so there's that like kind of like climate related identity. Um, we're using technology to explore the earth. We're not trying to like get away from it. We're trying to um, kind of go into this vastness, not to the, the, the metropolis, the city. They're kind of like focused on this like very um, material approach. I mean, okay, they're focused on this very like material approach to um, making music that's connected to like local sound basically. Um, and they, um, this, this part where it says the, our north is the south, that's actually like a really kind of common idea that comes from uh, Joaquin Perez. He's a, oh, I'm going to say it wrong, I think, <laughs> Paraguay. <laughs> um, and it, it's this idea that like, um, kind of like reorienting to think of um, the south as like this, this place with a lot of knowledge, especially in Punta Arenas, it's like so far away from the centralized um, Santiago. Um, so that's, that's kind of what a lot of people are working towards in Magallanes. So I'll play just a little bit of this documentary that they made with the uh, Chilean Antarctic Institute. Um, this one's called Ciencia Sur. And so they, what they did was they went to um, Antarctica, they went to the Antarctic Peninsula. They also went to some of the like reserves around Punta Arenas, and then they recorded sounds and then they synthesized them into the soundtrack for this. Uh, documentary. So you'll see some of, some of the different sounds that they incorporated. Some of them are more like processed than others, so you'll um, you'll hear that. And it's really long. It's like 45 minutes, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. <laughs> um. And then they're combining this with footage that they took and footage, like archival footage from the Antarctic Chilean Institute. So there's just kind of like an introductory, you can kind of hear this like wind wave sound kind of um, interacting with, with each other. Okay, so this, um, <laughs> this is um, the school in the, in the Antarctic Peninsula. Um, so they, they're like trying to basically like show different like scientific um, contexts at work here. <laughs> and that's Hector Aguilar, that's one half of Ubiasia. <laughs> and then the other half is Rafael Cheukilak, I don't think I said that. <laughs> I think that might be him. So they're also incorporating sounds of like the instruments on this base as well as um, some of the animals and water and things. Pinguinos. <laughs> All right, I'll skip one more time. So there's Hector, I'm trying to get some like more, I think like electromagnetic kind of subsonic material. <laughs> All right, so uh, I wish I could show you more, but, but I, 
running out of time here. Um, another quick example I'll give you is um, Sergio Perez Bontes, who is, um, he's kind of like a folklore classical composer. Um, and this particular instrument he called the calafatofono, which is um, based, it's made out of like the calafate um, plant. It's a berry that's kind of like a elderberry, blueberry, <laughs> kind of uh, down in, down in uh, Patagonia. Um, so he made this like out of, um, out of those materials, with obviously some that aren't, but um, um, yeah, and it's trying to kind of like channel like what, what he thinks the calafate would sound like. <laughs> um, so I'll just quick, I have to jump out of this for a second. Um, so this is, oh, I don't, I don't, that's I guess my background, but you can hear. This is called calafatofono dos. So these, these are the sounds that he's making with the with this instrument that he developed. skip a little bit. So yeah, it's kind of like some experimental sound art type, um, type work. Um, so I'll just go to my final slide here. Um, so just like really briefly, I want to thank all, uh, the uh, La Catolica. I'm working with Daniel Party. Steve, I don't know where he. Steve is also working with Daniel Party. <laughs> um, so he, um, that's he's been a really great mentor for me and kind of working with him virtually here. He's an ethnomusicologist, um, and I also work with kind of a, a large. Uh, group of people at the Universidad de Magallanes um, because there's not a musicology department. So I'm working with like a lot of departments, social sciences, Patagonian Institute, international relations. Um, there's a c collaborative like community laboratory. There's um, a, a pedag music pedagogy program. So like these have all been like amazing partners in this process. Um, and thanks again for organizing this event. Thanks to Fulbright for this opportunity. And that's it. <laughs> Thanks, man.